play by its nature is simply being engaged in the activity. We choose it from our own free will and we direct it. So we don't have an instruction manual we're following. We don't have friends telling us what the rules are. Play is all about us engaging in activities, me, myself, and I, that I want to do, that I decide how it's going to be, and that I make the rules. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Create, Play, Live podcast. I'm Nanette Saylor, your host. And as always, I am absolutely thrilled that you have chosen to take your time and your energy to join me today and to listen in. It is my deepest hope that these podcast episodes bring inspiration and uplifting energy to everyone who listens in and that they inspire you to create more, play more, and live full out. So today, I had something else planned, and then a conversation with one of my coaching clients yesterday inspired me to dig up an old blog post that was titled, Can Creativity and Discipline Coexist? You see, 10 years ago, or actually it's been more than 10 years ago now, when I embarked on this journey as a creativity coach, I began simply by re-engaging with my own creative energy. I had a calling that said, there's more to life than what you're living right now. You don't have to make everything so hard. And creation, creativity, that energy that tells you that you can make something from nothing, that is the key. And right behind that inspiration came this idea that a creative individual needed to be free and without restriction that all of the things that I loved about being a rebel at heart, that gee, being a creator, it spoke straight to that for me. And as I started to begin to figure out how to serve in the world in this new space, I also began to recognize that there needed to be a container, there needed to be some structure, there needed to be some process, some practice, some ritual attached, or else I was going nowhere. I might be creating here or there, but there was no process. There was no thing that was taking me anywhere. And so early on, and as is true now, almost every day, I go to my journal in the morning. I'm a big fan of Julia Cameron's work in The Artist's Way. I've worked through the 12-week course a couple of times myself, more than a couple now, actually, four or five times myself. And I continue to use morning pages as one of my core go-to tools for keeping my mind in the right place and keeping my energy in the right place and keeping me moving in a direction that feels purposeful and feels productive. And so on the pages of my journal, I began to explore this question, can creativity and discipline coexist? Can creativity and discipline coexist? So I invite you to consider the same thing. If you are one of those creatives who is hanging on to the belief that your creative energy needs to come in some lightning bolt moment or some divine inspiration that randomly hits you from the blue and then you run into your studio and you spend the four next days creating 24 hours a day from start to finish as this frenetic being of this burst of energy. If you're one of those people who believes still that your creative energy has to come to you like that, I hope you will continue to listen. 
And if you're someone who has started to get the sense that, yes, you've experienced that. You've experienced when your creative energy has come like that. And you also know that if you're starting to work in the world as an artist, as a creator, as a musician, as a chef, as an entrepreneur, that there are some scheduling things that happen in this human existence we have in 2018, soon to be 19. And there are some expectations for productivity for you if you are a quote-unquote working artist earning a living by your craft. So there is some value for process and ritual and practice. And there is a place for that in your world. And if you're like me, my hope is that you will soon discover that when you add the practice, the ritual, the process of creating with some regularity, and you get to call it, the regularity is entirely up to you. When you begin to add some process of creating with regularity, you have more of those magical moments of inspiration. Yes, you'll have lots of uninspired creations and you will be practicing your craft. So one of the things I enjoyed doing today was to dig up that old blog post and to take a look at it. And I got a chance to giggle at my old voice and to recognize how truly puzzled I was by the juxtaposition of these two things, can creativity and discipline coexist? And I actually discovered that a couple of years ago, I revisited this topic in a little video that I did over on my YouTube channel at Nanette Sailor on YouTube. And so you can find that over there if you want to go look at a few of my old videos. I think I did it as part of a video challenge and I didn't know what else talk about. So I came up with this topic one day. And here's the thing. It's important conversation because we as creatives, many of us as creatives, hang on to this idea of the, you know, lunatic artist that there's magic in their hiding in that frenetic, almost schizophrenic way of being we can all conjure up notions of Vincent van Gogh and his craziness that made it possible for him to be such a fine artist. My belief is that we don't have to be manic to be beautiful, inspired creators. And in fact, when we put practices in place that dial down the need for that frenetic manic behavior, we're a whole lot happier. And so are the people around us, by the way. So are the people around us. So when I wrote this blog post a couple of years ago, actually more than a couple, 10 plus, it's hard to remember. I started with, what does discipline really mean? Because for me, discipline was a word that when I spoke it out loud, the hair stood up on the back of my neck. Discipline was absolutely not something I ever intended to embrace in my life. I'm one of those people who never got out of bed on the same side, same way, same time, any two days in my life. And I continue to be that person. And I wear that sometimes as a badge of honor, right? I'm sure some of you listening know exactly what I mean. And that doesn't prevent me from getting to my journal and writing morning pages more mornings than I don't. Today, I might do it at 7.30. Tomorrow, I might do it at 9.30. The day after that, I might get up at sunrise and take my journal to the beach and do it there. That's still discipline in my book. 
And it took me a while to come to my own understanding of that. It took me a while to come to my own definition. So I want to invite you all to consider that if there are words like discipline in your vocabulary that you've been avoiding because they make the hair stand up on the back of your neck and they conjure up some notion that's attached to some old meaning that's probably some memory from when you were a child or maybe just last week when you watched somebody be critical of something or you heard a story from somebody who had to run off to interrupt something to go be on time exactly to do this thing. And you recognized how resistant you are to that. I want to encourage you to consider what is your discipline look like? What could it look like? What does discipline mean, according to Webster or Dictionary.net? Discipline means subject to rule. Submissiveness to order and control. Habit of obedience. Well, it's no wonder that the rebel in me was having a problem with that word. Submissiveness, control obedience as a creator? Are those any of the things that I want to be or want to be subjected to? Absolutely not. Those words are the epitome of anti-creative in my world. They do nothing to support imagination. They do nothing to support inspiration or innovation. And those things are all signature traits of entrepreneurs and creators in the world. No wonder the word discipline was making my skin crawl. And no wonder it makes some of my clients skin crawl too. Because we know too that some of the best inventions appeared from out of the box thinking appeared from magic accidents, appeared from mistakes. And aren't those things born from disobedience? That's an assumption I used to make. That's an assumption I used to make. Aren't those things, those happy accidents, those mistakes, aren't they born from disobedience? Well, maybe not. And when I keep reading in dictionary.net, I get to definition number two, which says to accustom to regular and systematic action to bring under control so as to act systematically, to train to act together under orders, to teach subordination, Hmm, not my idea of fun, to form a habit of obedience in, not my idea of fun, and to drill. So, Again, that obedience thing, it makes me a little tense. But now, as I look back at those first couple of descriptors, we are getting a little closer to what starts to feel a little more comfortable for me. The idea that I can appreciate and embrace regular and systematic action. That's something that I might be able to do. And remember, this is my self talking to me through my journal 10 plus years ago, early in my uncovering of my creative essence, playing, if you will, with what this process and practice might look like and starting to ask and answer questions. And one of those questions was, Can creativity and discipline coexist? 
So here was the first little crack in my armor, my resistance armor, if you will, that resistance armor that was so hung up on the idea of rules and habits and obedience and submissiveness in the definition of discipline. But what about this other definition to become accustomed to regular and systematic action? That had promise. And then I got a little further down and I saw this quote from C.J. Smith. Discipline aims at the removal of bad habits and the substitution of good ones, especially those of order, regularity, and obedience. And of course, in this process, I started to conjure up that image of the creative workspace that's full of a gazillion things, and not just things that are inspiring, but a mess. I conjured up images of that creative chaos and how hard it is sometimes for me to find my tools and what that does to zap my energy and my inspiration. And now I was starting to see, and certainly that's why this question bubbled up, how many times would I have to dig through piles of stuff to get to my favorite tools to write or my favorite tools to doodle or my favorite tools to paint or my favorite tools to craft a collage? If I couldn't find them and it took From that moment of inspiration, and I can't find my stuff because I'm living in chaos, then, and trying to create in chaos, then have I really honored that inspiration at all? I've just taken myself down in a big way in this process of the frustration of not being able to find the things I need and create in that moment of inspiration. So back to this idea of discipline. Simple, regular, disciplined actions can move me in the direction of my dreams and creations. Those simple, disciplined actions may be the basis of putting my materials in containers and having a place for them to be and going to them, knowing exactly where to go to them to find what it is that I need. That was the video that I did. It was all about how I organized all my materials. So now when I get inspired to craft a collage, I can go right to my basket where the magazines are, right to the place where the scissors are, right to the place where the glue is, and immediately begin creating in the moment of the inspiration. And discipline also looks like the practice, the process, the ritual of going to my journal every day. Now it looks like keeping a notebook of sketch paper on the coffee table in the living room so that in the evening when I'm winding down, I can doodle in circle in mandalas. Some of them are amazing. Some of them are not worth keeping in my mind. And the practice of doing this on a regular basis brings me closer and closer and closer to having those inspired moments. And then following the breadcrumbs of that to what else might be possible with these little doodles that I created. In this block of time that I know is an opportunity for me to relax before I go to bed. Other creators I know have different times of the day that they go to a random practice of creation. Writers I know, many writers I know, 
have a regular ritual around sitting down to write with regularity, whether it's a candle or a song or a scent or a place, a special book, a special pen. All of those things are part of the discipline of creating. And what I know for sure in having done this for 10 years with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people is that those that make the effort to establish some kind of regular practice are the ones who are creating prolifically and they are the ones who are stepping forward with courage and confidence to try new opportunities, to put their work out into the world. And they are the ones who are manifesting those opportunities by their frequent, inspired action. You see, that discipline now, that word that made the hairs stand up on the back of my neck, that discipline now is inspired action. Because it's not about a random rule. It's about something I desire. It's about something I want to bring forward in the world. It's about something that is aching to come forward from me in this creative possibility And when I don't give it room to be, it eventually dissipates and dies. Or, as Elizabeth Gilbert shares in Big Magic, that creation that is aching to come forward will find somewhere else to come forward if I don't give it the place to be. So can creativity and discipline coexist? My answer is absolutely yes. And my answer is absolutely it is required for a creator declaring to the world that he or she wants to put their voice out, their work out, their creation out for all to see, it is absolutely required that there be a practice, a process, and a ritual that you have designed for yourself by your own rules that holds the container for your creations. That's where discipline plays a really positive role. And yes, it takes a while for all of us to find our way through the muck and this old belief that creation requires random inspiration and lightning bolt moments. All of the profound creators I have studied over the last 10 years, all of them share a similar knowing, which is this. Creators create. We show up and do the work. And we show up and do it with regularity whatever regularity is defined as for you. It is not a random act. Our creative process is a practice of showing up, calling in creative energy. Julia Cameron calls it the great creator and using that energy to put out into the world in whatever form it's taking for you, that beautiful magic that is your creative essence. 
that's the process. And if it is that you are feeling called, if it is that you have declared yourself a writer, an actor, a musician, a singer, a dancer, a chef, an entrepreneur, it is required of your beingness to show up and take part in the act of creating more days than not and to make this a priority in your life and energetically for me the only way to make it a priority in my life is to make it a regular practice and process and ritual And now, fast forward 10 years, what I have discovered is that when I add on top this really fun energy of play, then I'm just here having a grand old time. And I am absolutely thrilled when the magical moment of inspiration hits and something that I really admire hits the page and something that others really admire hits the page or the canvas. That warms my heart and I know it contributes to the well-being of the world. And I also know if I didn't establish this pattern for myself of showing up and doing the work, I'd still be in my head thinking about the possibility of someone being touched by this thing that I've created, or better said, that has come through me to be created in the world. I don't want to be in the space of thinking about it anymore. I want to be in the space of seeing it be in a form that others can touch and feel so that others will be inspired to do the same. Because it's my belief that if we all gave more time to using a practice, a process, or a ritual to get us to the page, to get us to the canvas, to get us to the stage, we'd be living in a much kinder, gentler, more compassionate world. So with that, my friends, I will leave you today to take this question for yourself if you're still wrestling with it to the pages of your journal. Take it to the canvas. Take it to song. Dance it out. Play it out. Create it out. Allow yourself to find your own centeredness with it. And challenge yourself when the resistance comes up and invites you to say no. Notice that resistance for simply what it is, an intention to keep you safe, and challenge that so that you too can reap the benefits of feeling what it's like to more often than not have magic happen in your creative process. That's my dream for you. That's my reason for sticking with bringing these messages forth. That's my reason for choosing to be in the world as a creativity coach. This is who I am at my core. I wrestle every day with what it looks like to be a creator and to honor that for myself, and I encourage you to show up and be it for yourself too. 
as always. I will close today inviting you to stay curious, my friends. It is there that you will find the inspiration. And it is there that you will find the energy to continue to do the work. Until next time, this is Nanette Saylor signing off for the Create, Play, Live podcast. May you find magic today that makes your heart sing. You are listening to the Create, Play, Live show, where women come together to share how curiosity and creativity lead them to extraordinary lives. I'm your host, Nanette Saylor, and I'm honored to share the mic with some truly amazing women who have asked and answered the question, what if we stop adulting and live every day with the curiosity of a child at play? And these enlightening conversations will invite you to let go of outdated standards, make your own rules, and give yourself permission to play more than ever before. You have the power to create your life. Spend some time with us and you'll learn to see life through new eyes and challenge yourself to new possibilities. We may not solve the world's problems, but we will get you to think differently about your own. Come play with us. Listen and subscribe at createplaylive.com.